morning. It's the Thursday edition of the Morning Buzz at 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. And thanks for joining us for eighth official episode of the fall semester. Leave whatever you experienced behind yesterday, whether it was a great day or a bad one, and start fresh and positive with us. Good morning, everyone. I Good love morning. the fact that you, Kaya, are keeping count on our episodes. It makes me feel accomplished. So thank you for that. Um, how's everyone doing today? How are you doing, Kaya? You know, a little sleepy, but I did not butcher my coffee uh, this morning. So I'm very, very happy with that. You know, it was just about the right amount of coffee, the right amount of half and half, and the right amount of brown sugar because we do not have white sugar in my household. It's a little upsetting, but you know, I understand the need to be healthy. Exactly. I love it though. Um, I'm out, honestly a coffee person as well, but I haven't had my coffee yet. Um, how about you, Emma? How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well, a little sleepy. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're all I, feeling a little sleepy this morning, but we got to turn the vibe up, you know, dial yeah. it to an 11 max and just be excited because we have a whole fresh day. And that's what we're pitching today is that no matter what it is, we have a clean slate and we've got a whole 24 hours of just productivity ahead of us. Absolutely. Hopefully. I 100% yes. agree with you. Emma, tell us, part of our productivity, we have to know what's going on around the world. So tell us. Yes. Yeah. All right. Here is the latest news updates on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. Coronavirus cases are rapidly rising towards a third peak as rural areas, especially in Midwestern states, are being consumed by it, forcing some to realize that this pandemic is far from over. Montclair Local reported today that parents and students of Montclair School District rallied for in-person classes to begin claiming that remote to begin claiming that remote learning is ta taking a toll on their children. Montclair schools are set to open up around November 1st after HVAC systems are upgraded. President Saran B. Jeanbekov of Kyrgyzstan announced his re resignation today. This is following weeks of unrest among his people over a parliamentary election that was said to be rigged by vote buying. And as for weather, it is going to be a beautiful day today with sunny, clear skies and a high of 75 and a low of 48. Wow, thank you so much for that awesome weather update. Uh, you know, I got my sweater on today, got a, a, a pair of boots on, jeans, and I'm ready to rock this day, you know? I was about to say, I don't think it's going to be 75 degrees. I mean, we are in different areas, but still. No, oh, 75 degrees is Montclair, or are you not in Montclair? No, I checked, and it's going to be 73, which is very close here yeah. also. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, that's what the Apple app said for me. So I was like, geez, Kaya, you're wearing a long-sleeved sweater. That's going to be really interesting, especially if you're in the sun. <laughs> yeah, it's that time of year where you have to, like, bring a sweater, but also, like, wear a short sleeve shirt. It's, it's a confusing time. No, it is a confusing time, and that's, like, why I always mention that – Especially in the fall time, I just despise having to focus on like choosing layers and stuff because I feel like I'm so indecisive and stuff. And uh, for me to actually figure out what matches with what cardigan with shirt, card you know, shirt with tank top, it's yes, just it's yes. too much of a stress, too much stress for me. And I'm just like, I don't want to do this this morning. Uh, but yes, exactly. This morning I was getting ready at like 6 a.m. I know, crazy, right? And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to throw this sweater on and call it a day and not worry about it. <laughs> it looks nice. I like it. But honestly, this is why I just my go-to. No need to be worrying about anything, guys. Go-to sweats and a sweatshirt. Call it a day. Let's go. Let's get on. Crystal style. <laughs> College student style. I know. Period. <laughs> Um, but guys, we also have our special guest, or not really special, no, he is special, Tommy. Our special contributor. A special contributor, there you go, mm -hmm. is back with this week's sports updates. What's going on in the world of sports, Tommy? Good morning, girls. How are y'all doing today? Fantastic. A little sleepy, but can't complain, but I can still Jeez, get on with them we're all sleepy somewhat. today. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't stop me from doing some more sports, so let's get to it. Let's get so to it. So we kick off with today's sports cats with some postseason baseball action. Last night, the Los Angeles Dodgers embarrassed the Atlanta Braves with a final score of 15-3, as the Braves still lead the series two games to one. Game five of the NLCS continues at 8.08 p.m. Eastern time. The Houston Astros lived to see another day as they prevented the Rays from sweeping by a final score of 4-3 to, to take game four of the ALCS. 
Game 5 of the ALCS continues at 5.07 Eastern Time. Breaking news from the National Football League. The league announced last night that the 2021 Pro Bowl has officially been canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The 2022 Pro Bowl will be awarded to the Las Vegas Raiders' new home, Allegiant Stadium, and was also recently offered to host Super Bowl 58 in 2024. There will be no Thursday night football this week due to COVID-19 schedule changes, as the Chiefs and Bills that were supposed to be playing will be moved to Monday night football instead. And to wrap up today's sportscast, the Red Bulls tied with Toronto last night by a final score of 1-1, to while, at, while New York City FC also tied with Orlando by a score of 1-1, and the Philadelphia Union tied with D.C. United by a score of 2-2. And that concludes your sportscast for today. Back to you, Kyle and Crystal. I'm loving that the Red Bulls and uh, the football club are tying. That's awesome. We had a we had a little bit of a you know unleveled last week where the football club was definitely like beating uh, the Red Bulls. But I like to see the rivalry teams of New York. You know, both yeah. doing the same, doing good. Go Red Bulls! No bias, of course. Uh, yeah, thank you I'll... so much, Tommy, <laughs> for uh, that awesome sports cast. Love to get a touch and feel of the sports world. Of course, uh, for that's what I'm here for. Fan. Uh, but uh, yeah, thank you so much, Tommy. And no problem, guys. Have a good one. Of course. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, so, Crystal, you know, we love this new segment that we brought about just recently. Uh, we're going to talk about some events on campus because, like we've mentioned before, you know, even if we are in a pandemic, uh, we still want to make sure that we're getting the full immersive experience and just staying in contact with our friends and acquaintances uh, from classes and stuff. And we just want to be a part of the campus, whether it's virtual in person. So tell us, what can students expect for this week or next week? Of course, Kaya. So there's a lot, there's a combination of uh, in-person events and Zoom events. So definitely a lot to take advantage of. One that is happening today in, at 10 a.m., it, it is an online event, and it basically helps students and faculty understand and confront racism as well as provide tools on how to share and dismantle privilege. The event is called How to Be Anti-Racist. Uh, <laughs> then for Friday, I picked another event. It's called Virtual De-Stress De and Color. And it's basically an opportunity for MSU undergraduate students to come together remotely and color a Mandela will, that will be emailed to them beforehand to relax the music. Sounds like fun to me. And then for Saturday, for all of our outdoor people, they have an advanced hike and they call it the stairwell, stairway to heaven. Oh, and I heard about that. Really? Mm -hmm. This is an outdoor adventure in Vernon, New Jersey for the ultimate advanced tra um, trail. This trail is 2.9 miles and, go, and gives wonderful, wonderful views of farmland. They claim it's a perfect challenge for any hiker. Um, as always, these are some of the events that I saw at the email that says keeping you in the loop. Uh, it gives you a rundown of all the events that are happening. So, of course, um, it's always good to check it out uh, if you'd like. And yes, Kaya, are you going to be participating in any of these events? I would like to. I definitely have to look into that. Uh, but I actually heard a little bit about the Stairway to Heaven hike. Uh, one of my friends, Matt Olson, he actually did that hike one time and he like raved about it for about 10 minutes uh, in the car. And he was like, it's super difficult. Like it's a really, really hefty hike. Like you got to come in uh, just with your bottle of water, you know, a nice good pair of hiking shoes and the attitude because it's going to be a tough one, but always rewarding. And I definitely did a bunch of hikes in the beginning of fall, but I think it's time to, to go back and do a couple of last <laughs> hiking trips before winter sets in for sure and I feel like especially during the fall it's so pretty to just walk and see the leaves changing colors and falling and it's just like I love doing hikes <laughs> in the fall to be honest you know when I still lived in New York I would sometimes drive uh, through New Jersey to go to Pennsylvania or just any other destination weekend getaway type stuff and I always noticed that the trees by the highway in New Jersey were a lot nicer, especially in autumn time in New Jersey than in New York. And I'm like, wow, New Jersey always had really nice color changing trees. That's, a, that's like, I always think about that. I would always resonate color changing trees with New Jersey when I was younger. 
they the see new jersey does it better what can i say kaya <laughs> oh, that's zoo. and also guys uh in the keep in the loop email we actually the office team just released a october november newsletter and you can actually find it in last week uh keeping in the loop email so you can just that's click on funny. that link and check it out we always feature our members and activities that we do at the station and yeah that's right. We got highlighted in the uh, email, which is kind of dope. I will say that. You may also check the newsletter out on our official website at WMCRadio.com. Of course. Kaya, let's get right into our next story. All right. So here we go. Politics time. Brace your, put on your po- political dun, dun, dun. hats for just a second. It's going to be real quick. Promise. So. President Donald Trump and Joe Biden will compete for TV audiences in dueling town hall meetings instead of meeting face-to-face for their second debate as originally planned. They will both be taking questions in two separate cities with two different networks present. So Trump will be on NBC from Miami and Biden will be on ABC from Philadelphia. Trump backed out of his plans to do a presidential face-off, original scheduled for tonight after debate organizers said, nope, you're going to have to do a virtual event. And following his coronavirus diagnosis, he still may be contagious. So in just to to keep regulation to be extremely safe and cautious, they're going to move to virtual. So as the pace of the campaign speeds up in its final weeks, the two candidates are taking care of other electoral necessities today. So Trump has a midday rally in Battleground, North Carolina, and Biden is raising campaign cash at a virtual event. Trump has been trying to bring up support from big businesses and voters in the red state of Iowa, which he thought he had them already, you know, supported and under, under just with him. And he basically won them in 2016, but Biden has been making a late push in the red state of Iowa. So that's really interesting. Trump also claimed that in the most recent Iowa poll that he saw, quote, for me to only be up six, I'm a little bit concerned. He asserted multiple polls have shown a much closer race. Biden, on the other hand, held a virtual fundraiser from Delaware and used his appearance to say that Trump was trying to rush through Amy Coney Barrett, his nominee for the Supreme Court, to help his efforts to repeal the Obama health care law, calling that, quote, an abuse of power. So you'll be able to find both, uh, both presidential candidates today uh, on today's uh, presidential election on NBC and ABC. So please stay tuned for that. Mm. I wonder who's going to mean to have the most views. You know, I was going to I know, say, right? Kaya, yeah, That's interesting. I was, was going to say, Kaya, I feel like the polls, when he says that he's only like 6% um, ahead in the polls, um, I think it's interesting because I feel like personally, just off of like social media and kind of what I see, I would have thought that, yes, President Trump is the one leading and by a lot, just by the way everybody seems so confident and everything. Hey, but I guess... It's just for show. <laughs> no, and, you know, you would think that a red state like Iowa would be totally for Trump or the majority of the residents would go for Trump, the Republican Party. But it seems that that's not necessarily the case. Right. And Biden is making a push in those states, too. So tr- this is like kind of one of the first times that I'm seeing Trump being like, oh, I'm a little worried now. You know, he usually doesn't really admit that and tries to hope for the best. Right. So, yeah, guys, please go out to the polls and vote. And determine the future of our country. Yeah. If you're registered, do it. This is a PSA. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like there's always a lot of um, resources. And I know specifically on campus, there's also a lot of people, um, especially the civic and uh, voter engagement office. I know they do a lot of stuff. And, you know, if you have a question, I know the other day I had a question. Um, I was writing a paper and it was regarding voting. And if there is going to be drop off, um, places on campus and I asked them and he was very nice person he just answered my question so what I'm getting to is if you're a student and you live on campus and you may not know where to vote just shoot them an email and I'm sure they will be more than glad to answer your question and you can always just type in the word vote or how to vote on the Montclair official website and it will take you to many links of different resources you can also find voting events and how to vote instructions by going on to our engage which is kind of like our new hawk sync platform now where you can find a bunch of organizations and uh, keep update 
keep keep updated with their events. So you can always just type in vote and see what they're doing to make sure that everyone's voting properly. Absolutely. Um, wait, Kaya, have you received your ballot already? <gasps> Why did you at me out like this? No, not yet. I actually just <laughs> registered. I actually just oh, registered nice. to vote. So uh, I still haven't gotten the ballot yet. And it's the first time that I actually registered to vote, which is kind of bad because I'm not going to at myself, but last presidential ne- election, I was, I don't know if I was old enough or maybe I was old enough, but I just, you know, I don't think I was old enough. Maybe I was, maybe I was. You I'm were. Sure. How old are you now? Oh, you well, I'm 20 like- now. So I definitely wasn't oh, old yeah. enough. Uh, <laughs> but I was like, yeah, no, I'm making myself older than I seem to be. Uh, but yeah, I did just register and I'm waiting. Nice. It's okay, Kai. I don't have my ballot either. And I applied for a at-home ballot like weeks ago. And my whole family has theirs, but not me. So hopefully it comes soon. I know, you live in Pennsylvania, right? I do, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was about to yeah. say, because it sounded weird when you said I had to request that's so weird. Yeah, it's very different. It's um, not as easy as it should be, in my opinion, but it's yeah. just my opinion. I had, yeah, I was doing this assignment about, like, interviewing and on campus and just everything, and I had met a this one student who basically said the same thing as you, Emma. She lives in PA, and it's not as easy as it sounds or it should be and that she is and she's in fears that her ballot will get lost or something something will happen to it or her vote won't count so she said she's going to be taking the two hour ride to Pennsylvania to go drop off the ballot in person oh so wow wow that is dedication and the amount of like yeah the, that's that's a man of drive and dedication good for her good for your friends yes. um but also the amount of like pictures that i've seen of people like wanting to drop off their ballots uh and the long lines that everyone's expecting and stuff is yeah it's good we like to see this turnout right you know and it's also you're seeing these long lines at the dmv so we're just at a time now where this is long lines are just a part of our responsibility and it's just what you have to do because we are in a pandemic you know uh but yeah stick stick it out through those long lines and make sure that you drop off your ballot and i will let you guys know as soon as possible as i receive mine in mine in, in in the mail and emma and me because none of us have our ballot yeah, <laughs> i know because okay. and you were like hi do you have your ballot and you know no <laughs> but it's coming hopefully <laughs> coming it's coming on to our next story health issues as wildfire smoke hits millions in the u.s oof wildfires have exposed millions of people in the west to hazardous pollution levels um according to the associated press analysis of pollution data and interviews with physicians emergency room visits are spiking along with thousands of deaths among the elderly um smoke at concentration that topped the government's charge charts for health risks and lasted at least a day inhaled by more than 8 million people across five states in recent weeks, AP analysis show. Some major cities in Oregon uh, last month suffered the highest pollution levels they've ever recorded when powerful winds um, supercharged fires to remote areas and the edge of densely populated Portland. Um, There's medical complications began arising while communities were were still in smoke, including hundreds of additional emergency room visits and uh, among others. Um, Wildfires are a regular occurrence in Western states, but they've grown more intense and dangerous as we've seen, uh, especially during the changing climate dries out forests thick with trees and underbrush from decades of fire suppression. Um, Ryan has a little story for us. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. It's always, always. good to be. It's always it's good to be pleasure. on. It's a pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> Ryan has. He was actually uh, speaking with a friend uh, earlier, and his friend lives in the state of Washington, and has a little bit about, uh, you know. Yeah. So my friend uh, AJ, if you're listening, AJ, it's probably way too early for you. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, my friend AJ has been living in Washington for a long time, and. Not D.C., Washington, the state, which has really also been affected by these wildfires that we've seen, Um, just the pollution level and everything, and especially the air quality. Now, my friend AJ, he has a motorcycle. He loves going out and doing, um, you know, like riding around on his motorcycle and 
That's so awesome. Yeah, and, yeah, and and he just likes going on trips. And he went for a ride, and I'm sharing my screen here for those of you who are watching on YouTube or on Facebook Live. Uh, he sent my friends and I this picture. He went for a ride out on his motorcycle and decided to swing by um, Walmart. And this is at like two in the afternoon, by wow. the way. It was the forecast was a clear sunny day, mm -hmm. zero fog, zero clouds. And for those of you who are just listening, this picture, uh, the sun is just a tiny white speck in the sky. Right. And you can't see like the parking lot across the street. Um, you can see down the parking lot that he's in and the sky is just thick smog. Mm -hmm. And really, you know, one terrible part of these wildfires is it has just been destroying the air quality for yes. a lot of states and um you know it's really difficult for people like my friend aj who also have um i believe he has uh, asthma and you know especially people who are susceptible to more you know airborne diseases especially during a pandemic you know yeah so but it, you don't mix ex exactly At so all. really it's just uh it's one of the uh it's just another thing to add to the 2020 bingo card, I guess you could call it. But really, it, it has been rough um, on the air quality of the people of the West Coast. And just another thing to add on to the pandemic as well. Yeah, it's if you really look at the statistics, uh, especially if you go on the article on AP News, the article is titled Health Issues at Wildfire Smoke Hits Million in U.S. You can actually see a bunch of statistics that the AP News gathered together, and you can see that in pretty much every state in the West Coast, the the amount of air pollution has rise exponentially. Like, it is pretty awful like you could just see the spike go up in the last couple of months and it's important that uh we tie this to climate change in a way you know because there are rising global temperatures and wildfires are an effect of climate change as well so it's really important to take both into consideration and to just be wary of what's going on in the west coast and uh how you know the, how it's being treated and such just it's important as us on the east coast that we don't necessarily are dealing with this uh directly that we are staying knowledgeable about what is happening in the west and the amount of homes and the people that are getting affected by this i will say that um it's it's like what you said kaya that although we are in the east coast and it doesn't not that it doesn't affect us but it we just don't it's just different when you hear and like see something instead of like actually experiencing it. So I just feel like it's, it's just so crazy because to me, it's like such a crazy idea of just seeing like your forest um, burn and just like inhale that smoke and see it. And I don't know if you remember Kaya and Emma, but a couple of weeks ago, uh, I forgot. It was, I think it was, it's been like a couple of weeks that fires have been burning continuously and like that orange like soft hue came all the way to like New York and then you could see it from over here and I remember talking to it to my manager because he lives in New York and he was just like it's crazy how it's reached us and I just wanted to say that like it's crazy <laughs> it's crazy but it's true and it's happening so our thoughts and prayers are always with the west coast yeah, and we they've definitely experienced wildfires very occasionally, especially in California, but just the extent of how far the wildfires have reached and just span across many more states now, and the fact that it's not being controlled, uh, or it is being controlled, but it's the, the rate of spread is a lot faster than uh, the, the rate of trying to control and tame the fire. It's just really important to... Uh, pay more attention to environmentalism because I know that if I speak to a bunch of students here and I speak to a bunch of my friends, like if I mention the word environment or climate change, it's like you kind of see like a frown on their face and they're like, hey, like, okay, we get it, you know, but it's important to take it more seriously. And that's why it's such a huge topic in the presidential election. Uh, climate change is a very huge topic. And that's why you're seeing both political parties being just addressing this and talking about their ideas and their plans for uh, just facing environmental issues in the nation and just to actually analyze what they're saying and take that into consideration and compare that to the future of, you know, the yeah. climate here. 
I, I had a very, uh, I guess you could call it a weirdly sobering moment uh, the other day. I mm-hmm. was filling out the logs for the morning buzz. We submit a bunch of our stories that we've reported on, like relevant stories to the FCC. So I was going through all our old shows. And on one of them, I saw, and this was so weird to me, uh, I reported on a story that was um, a couple lightning strikes have smart have sparked some small uh, wildfires down in California. Oh wow! And I remember seeing the pictures, and I was looking back through the story and just thinking to myself, like, man, I could not at the time. I did not think we would still be reporting on these wildfires. Yeah. For how long has it been? Two months now. Feels so like more. It, yeah, it's insane. So it was a weird moment when I realized, like, these wildfires have been going on. Like, people might be tired of hearing about them, but at the same time, you know, like, listen, I'm tired about hearing about, you know, all these terrible things that are happening in the world, too. But you have to realize, like, they've been it's going still on. Happening. It's still and happening. And it's not going to go away. <laughs> and it doesn't help when we also yeah. report on stories like a couple, what was it? The couple had a gender reveal party that <gasps> sparked a wildfire. Oh, my it's Lord. like, come on people. I know. <laughs> Just don't be dumb. You know, it's like, there's only so much we can do to help climate change, but we can't really help just the dumb people out there. <laughs> No, or if people are just being super, like, you know, just irresponsible and just leaving campfires in the forest. Exactly. We we, we have a part, we have a responsibility in making sure that this doesn't happen. Think about Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Oh, the bear in the national parks. (laughs) I love Smokey. Smokey is a legend. But yeah, this is just climate change is real, y'all. We've got wildfires happening in our nation. And just please stay updated. And our prayers are going to everyone in the West Coast who are dealing with them directly. All right. We'll be right back after a short break. And we are going to talk entertainment only after this. So stay tuned. And we're going to just do a reel, a highlight reel of Billboard Awards coming up next. This is how we do every day. We be and if you want to come and text us, if you love them enough to turn off your music and pretend like their music is your music. Ah, this is mommy's jam. Then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Let's play it again. Check today at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ag Council. And we're back. So yeah, the Billboard Music Awards happened yesterday, and there we're going to talk all biggest moments from Lizzo's speech to Garth Brooks' concert and the Korean K-pop band BTS. The Billboard Music Awards were on yesterday with Kelly Clarkson as the event's host. It was a, a bit strange with no audience being present because there was no applause and there were no screams, but energetic Clarkson anyway continued to yell the names of the evening's forthcoming performers. She laughed to herself saying, quote, there's no audience, it's just me, I'm my own hype girl. Clarkson, aren't we all? Uh, she bedazzled the stage with a long gold sequenced gown and sang a cover of Steve Winwood's Higher Love and was joined on stage by a cappella group Pentonix, I love them, and drummer Shaley E. Although the award ceremony was not the same as previous years, here are the night's most memorable moments. John Legend was publicly grieved a pregnancy loss with Chrissy Teigen and sang the, his single, Never Break, dedicating the song to his wife and saying in a whisper before starting the song, this is for Chrissy. After revealing her new single earlier in the day, uh, Lovato sang her new single titled Commander in Chief, encouraging her fans to vote uh, after the song. The voting message was also clear as Lizzo's one sleeve black mini dress literally printed vote a bunch a million times on her dress and she used her acceptance speech for top song sales artist award to speak about why she thinks it's important to use your voice and to vote she said quote i've been thinking a lot about suppression noting that she probably wouldn't be on stage accepting an award if it weren't for the big black women who refused to have their voice be suppressed end quote 
you also saw a bunch of dancers that were wearing masks in a bunch of live performances. For instance, Bad Bunny's dancers wore matching masks and tutus and spun on roller skates. Alicia Keys, was, who was also in a sequenced bodysuit that was paying homage to Cher, uh, with her hairdo as well, had a masked band and modern dancers that were also masked during her set. And Vogue's band was wore sparkly vote masks behind the group and Doja Cat, who at one point danced to a jazzy version of Juicy in front of projections of herself in a flapper-esque outfit, also had dancers behind her wearing masks as well. Woo, that's amazing. I think it's awesome that I don't know. I could never see myself dancing and wearing a mask at the same time. So big applause for all of the backup dancers uh, in those performances. That's super yes. epic. Uh, Brandy also performed her throwbacks with Ty Dolla Sign, like, quote, almost doesn't count. Uh, and uh, literally just did a whole uh, choreography stunt and uh, just a duet with uh, Ty Dolla Sign, which is super awesome. Uh, Post Malone was also announced as the Billboard's top male artist. He was famously known for using his acceptance speech at an American Music Awards to say, I love grapes. But this time he was actually really sentimental and said a really beautiful thing. He thanked his beautiful mother and handsome father and his beautiful stepmother and made sure to let everyone know to quote, stay strong and spread love. Malone actually collected a total of nine trophies while Taylor Swift and Ariana Grande earned zero and including top artists. Also, to end the show, uh, we had country star Garth Brooks accepted the Icon Award from Cher herself, the prodigy, and performed a medley of his own songs on the Dolby stage. Uh, but there was something different about his set this time. Uh, unlike the other performers, he actually mixed in sound effects of cheers and people singing along to his pre-recorded tracks. Uh, and it was a bit awkward, but uh, this is the man who crashed Facebook with his COVID performance. So the dude knows where it's at for sure. And literally towards the end of his song was like, shout out to all the people. <laughs> and I just thought it was so adorable. Yeah, so the Billboard Awards were definitely eventful. We had a lot of performers coming up on stage and a lot of celebrities introducing awards. It was an eventful night, especially in an empty audience. Audience. So that's super strange, but this is our this is our new reality of award shows now. This is it. Got to get used to them. I love the fact that they still have you know their their dancers and uh, although yes they are wearing masks and you know like you said props to them. Um, I I love the fact that they're still putting up a show you know putting on a show for us to enjoy who aren't stuck at home. So I love it. I'm here for it. Yeah, it's really cool yeah. to see like how they all adapt to everything, like the dancers, the hosts, the singers, like, and the stuff we don't see too, like all the backstage people, like how they have to be careful and what they're doing and as if that like maybe there's less of them now. So yeah, it's interesting for sure. I honestly would love to see any award ceremony that was previously hosted uh, during the pandemic to do a behind the scenes reel or some kind of documentary that just like talks about how they were able to put together an award ceremony, uh, just it, obviously taking into consideration that uh, you have to keep safety protocols a priority, but at the same time, you have to keep your event, your televised event as entertaining as possible. And with that, bringing in people to the stage, right? So I would like to see how the event planning went along. And just like if there were, I don't know, if maybe celebrities were actually tested before, like a day or two beforehand, were they tested at the site? I would like to know these things because I think it's just super interesting. Right. And I feel like it's, um, like Emma said, that all the backstage people who we don't get to see and there's so many I will say that as I'm you know getting more into like my major and just you know tv production as, as, a, as a whole I think that there's so many like crucial parts you know crucial people who play a role in making these productions and these award shows and all these events just happen so I just it's really interesting and I, I, I also would like to these questions answered Kaya no I know and it's like 
you know, what did the celebrities have to do specifically? Uh, were there any like discussions with each performer or celebrity uh, beforehand to make sure that both the celebrity felt uh, comfortable and the safety protocols and the working environment in the event was safe also so i think it's super interesting and i would love to see that so hopefully you know fingers crossed that might be in the work soon uh but there was also a lot of attention brought by celebrities to vote the more the monday buzz talked about celebrities voicing their political opinions and encouraging people to vote and they were like what do y'all think should musicians share their political views while encouraging people to vote um hmm a good question honestly yes you do you <laughs> I, I i feel like okay in my personal opinion i think that it's your performance mm -hmm. you're the artist it's your music or you have the rights to it so you do whatever you want to do you know what i mean like it's you and you get to do it however i will say that i forgot what i was reading the other day but basically saying how these um, entertainment people, artists, or whatever, actors, um, sometimes tend not to know enough about, you know, like, what's going on, politics, and all these other um, topics that they be talking about, and that maybe they should just, it's like what you said, they should just stick to <laughs> um, producing music, or singing, or dancing, or whatever the case may be, um, and not impose or say what their political views are, because chances are that their following will follow their political views. As crazy as that may sound, I think that it can actually happen. So uh, uh, I feel like, personally, it, I think they should. But At the same time, though, like, I feel like an average person doesn't always really know what they're talking about. So, I mean, that's sort of the whole thing is, like, the argument is, like, they are people, but they also do influence more people than the average person does. So I don't personally have a problem with celebrities sharing their views or promoting people to vote. I just think that it's really important, especially for them to know what they're talking about, because if they don't, then they're just adding to the problem. So it totally depends. Great. Exactly, Emma. And, you know, honestly, I was going to say the same thing where celebrities have, they are like, just like you said, they're people. So they have a right to voice their political opinions. But at the same time, and I know I've said this all the time on the buzz is a lot of famous people, whether they be in politics or just celebrities in general, they have this like, I call it a sense of like passive influence, where mm -hmm. they may not be trying to influence people. But just the sheer fact that you're on TV, you're, you know, in movies or you are on the cover of albums, you know, that just that base fact is influential to people. So they'll look up to you. And just like you said, you know, you may be sharing your political opinions, but then, you know, you might be influencing a lot of people to follow your political opinions. At the same time, celebrities are also catching a lot of, you know, hate for sharing their political opinions and people are yelling at them, oh, just stick to music or whatever. But if you look at music, a lot of music is political. I mean, like- Just take, like Demi take Lovato's the, single, yeah, Commander in Chief. Exactly. Or take like, you know, Eminem for an example, it, or I don't know, the entire genre of punk rock stemming from the fact that it was you know people rebelling like a lot of music is political so it's this weird kind of back and forth thing that's been happening i think but it's cool to see that at the music awards they were just saying vote they weren't saying who to vote for yeah that, that yeah. i appreciated that is i do agree with that i also think that it's really important that at all the awards and i'm going to be honest i actually didn't watch these awards so kai you can correct me if i'm wrong but my understanding I just the is that real as well. <laughs> okay, um, but my understanding was that all of the celebrities and the people involved in this were wearing masks, which is a huge thing, and it's really, really important that people who do have this influence are promoting health and safety. I mean, that is definitely the best part of all of this. 
I mean, I'm sorry, Emma, but I have to correct you. Not all of the celebrities were actually wearing masks, especially oh, those that no. were performing. Uh, it was their okay. backup dancers that had masks on. Uh, but Billie Eilish, when she came to accept her award, she was wearing a mask. Uh, and she, like, used her acceptance speech to just be like, hey, guys, stay safe, wear your mask, mask up, and just be cautious. The virus is still here. Uh, but, I mean, we're turning back to what you guys were talking about and the idea of celebrities using their platform to encourage people to whether sway towards one political side or not uh, or the other. Uh, I know that celebrities could do it in a subtle way. For instance, Demi Lovato, well, I mean, her single said it all, right? She was referring to President Trump, but she was wearing a blue jumpsuit. Right. So say, for instance, celebrity and they're wearing a color of the political party, but not really saying, OK, you know, vote for Biden or vote for Trump. Right. I mean, it's still saying like, OK, it's still saying, OK, like, you know, obviously I'm supporting this party, but it's not like she's verbally saying it. You know what I mean? Or, or the celebrity would be verbally saying it. Kaya is going to hate me, but I think she's like. I think, Kaya, you're reaching. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't think her wearing a blue romper has anything to do with who she's encouraging someone to vote for. I think because of everything that's happening right now, especially for this election, everybody's like, oh my God, like everything means something. Like, I just think she was just wearing a blue dress. Cough, cough, color association, no, cough, cough. I'm sorry, Crystal, but that's no. She was literally, I mean, I wasn't even referring, I was referring to Demi as an example, but you know, I was saying hypothetically, if any celebrity during a, a very the last few weeks of the presidential election uh, is wearing a color that represents a political party on stage on a musical performance, uh, then obviously, you know, people are going to assume that she is trying to uh, say or just, you know, represent a political party and stuff. Uh, I just, I think it's true. And I mean, obviously, if you look at the single itself, she was, the whole single is talking about President Trump and addressing him, right? So uh, combining with the jumpsuit, uh, yeah. But I, I mean, I was, you're right, for sure. Like, Crystal people who mm, dress her up yeah. would Are have you, to Demi? know. No, I think, and Demi has been very vocal about who she is voting for. Uh, even Taylor, like she is a country artist. Uh, she was and is now um, with folklore. She kind of like tapped into it again. Uh, and everyone assumed that, oh, because she's a country artist, she's going to vote Republican, right? And no, she came out with these Biden cookies and is like, yeah, no, I'm Democrat. And it's like, there, you know, there are ways where you can just literally put Biden on a bunch of cookies and post it on Instagram. And then there's ways where you could as celebrities do in a subtle way, but not say those words. I mean, in my personal opinion, uh, just to like wrap things around, uh, I honestly think that it's important, like Emma said, that as a celebrity, as someone, a prominent figure, you have in like you have an influence over so many people, right? And you, every single person has their own uh, specific, uh, you know, individual circumstance and things that they value or not. Uh, and I don't know. Uh, I mean. It's, it's like, I feel like ideally in a different election, I would, I would feel like it, it's, it wouldn't be as fair, but I don't know, to be completely realistic with the important social and human issues that are happening right now, it's like, it needs to be talked about. You know what I mean? Like, obviously we know that one political party is swaying towards uh, supporting black lives and the other not so much or not, right? So it's, it's just, it's, it's a complicated knot, guys. For sure. Yeah, I mean, is. Right, yes. you, could, you could be right, you know, but just from my personal opinion, I, I, I just feel like I wouldn't look in too deep into it. But I, will I wouldn't look into deep into it. <laughs> not because I just don't think, like, I think she just, like, I know you were just using an example, but I think she's just wearing whatever she wants to wear. Um, but if you but, look into every documentary, like, of every, like, concert documentary Ooh. where all the celebrities have like an hour long and they talk about how they carefully plan their outfits and like they oh. carefully plan it to their song list it's so hard to believe that it was a coincidence uh, sorry i guess how how i don't know gullible or i don't know how people could be you just look ah, uh, it is what it is naive I, <laughs> I like to think as a uh, music award shows as entertainment and not as you know political which i guess goes back to our conversation about whether or not they should be voicing their political views. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, though, that just to kind of wrap these thing, this thing up, this story up, that 
I feel like if influencers or celebrities use their platform or say something, some people will have a problem. And if they don't, more people will have a problem. So either way, they're going to have, you know what I mean? Like people, they're still going to get backlash from people regardless. So I feel like they should just, as Emma said, they are people and they should just really do whatever makes their ha- their heart happy. It's just they have a whole platform that reaches other, pe- that reaches millions of people and we don't, but they're still humans, right? And I totally support them doing it on their, like, on their social media and, like, outside of the, the stage, uh, but also on stage, too. So it's something that will continue to be debated, right? And it's something sure. that you might want to think about, too. Do you want to see your favorite, do you want to see your favorite person go up on stage and share their political view? For sure. But moving on to enough about um, political talk. <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> <Maybe not. laughs> We're getting the political, what is it, GPB? No, it's like the, uh, no, it's a term. <laughs> it's like when you have like a fever, like fan fever, the heebie cheebies. I don't think, I don't think. So. <laughs> you don't know uh, what the heebie jeebies are? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the political heebie jeebies. The political <laughs> Jeebies. <laughs> oh. All right. Um, but now let's get into some techie stuff, which kind of it got me a little upset. I will admit it right now. Uh, uh, Apple. Apple, <laughs> Apple removes power adapters and headphones from its box and hmm. calls it progress. Yep, you heard me right. A Tuesday pre-recorded Apple event where they touted the new features coming with the various iPhone 12s. One of the features... Actually, you know, (laughs) let me scratch that. I I actually feel wrong for calling it a feature. A new concept that is being introduced is the iPhone box will not include a power adapter or headphones. And according to Lisa Jackson, Apple's vice president of environmental policy and social initiatives said it translates to, quote, a smaller, lighter iPhone box, letting Apple fit up to 70% more products on a shipping pallet. Apple is positioning this as an environmentally friendly move that will ultimately reduce carbon emissions and let the company company ship more devices on a single pallet. <sighs> Honestly, how do you guys feel about this? Apple is, I will say though, and not, I'm trying to defend Apple, but they are um, making the, these accessories that won't be included with the new iPhone a little less expensive. Um, so approximately according to the verge they are discounting approximately ten dollars from these um items i'm not sure if it makes a big difference but if you were to get the adapter and the headphones you would pay an additional approximately 38 dollars how do we feel about this i for a person that actually doesn't own the airpods i am so sad because I am a broke college student and yes, I will get that printed on a t-shirt and wear it and, you know, let everyone know. And I am not going to be spending an extra $100 uh, to be buying another set of headphones. I actually rely on the headphones that come in the box and I also rely on the charger as well. I think uh, iPhones are just the price the price tag on iPhones now are like three times as much as they used to cost a couple of years ago. So the, the, the cost is going up and now you're taking away two concepts. No. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they're going to include the, the USB C lightning cable, but nonetheless, it's still a little frustrating. I, I love this. I will say this is some great marketing skills talking about some, Oh, it's for the environment. Wow. I, I, yeah. I am impressed. I was, sure. yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I believe that to be yeah. honest with you, but um, I don't know. I mean, for me, I'm not someone who's super upset about it. Like I do have an Apple iPhone, but like I use the headphones I'm wearing right now primarily because I don't really love earbuds. Um, but I just think like it's, I don't know. It just seems like a whole Thing just to make more money to me it just has it written all over it and they're masking it with this whole we're saving the environment thing where it's like there's a lot more you could do to save the environment than right emma and out of this but and before i enter in fueling ryan uh i do have to say that they have changed their cables before right uh remember the time where i mean they literally took out the headphone uh jack 
thing mm-hmm. to our iPhones. Then they changed the charger completely for the MacBook Air, right? The one that I have, the rose gold one, uh, the A1932. Why do I know that by memory? Because I always order cases off Amazon for it. Uh, and, you know, it's just, they're already changing so much. So it's not fair to those that can't really afford those new features. All right, enter in Fueling Ryan. Oh man, why are you doing this to me? All right, so welcome to Ryan, Rants with Ryan. Um, so I I will declare myself, I guess, this show's resident Android user for the time being. Right, he has an Android. Yeah. No, um, all right. So I could okay. probably no. write a 50-page term paper for why I despise Apple ever since Steve Jobs, you know, unfortunately passed away. Um, the mainly the big reason being the fact that they have transferred their focus from innovation to marketing and this oh, yeah. is probably the most cl- I'll give it I'll give it to you Apple this is probably the most clever marketing strategy I have ever seen in my life the amount of times that me and ryan literally had debates over like the resolution of the iphone and the camera resolution too and the pixels like oh you don't even get me started you can talking about that they're not changing the iphone yeah fun fact (laughs) if you think the new iphone cameras are awesome look at the megapixel resolution for the past three iphones i'll give you a hint they haven't improved it they've just added more lenses uh that said they have improved like some resolution stuff but anyways that's a whole different thing this I find really interesting, that specifically this whole um, removing – so they're basically just not including cables now when you buy the phone, right? No, they include the cable but not the power adapter. The power so the adapter, box, okay. Right? And the headphones. So here's, here's the interesting thing. When, they, when I first heard about them removing the headphone jack, I genuinely asked myself, why on earth would Apple remove a headphone jack? I know. I was so disappointed when that happened. (laughs) I know. So were a lot of people. And they were like, well, what the heck? That's weird. Oh, but the new Apple earbuds you can still use and whatnot. No, but you can't listen to music and charge at the same time. So what do you you have a different adapter? You buy an adapter. An Apple adapter. Yeah. What do you do if you want to use headphones that aren't Apple brand? You buy a different adapter. (laughs) It's ri- yeah, so no, it is a marketing scheme. Exactly, it's all it's it all, is. A, a, you know a scheme. I guess you could say is the best way to phrase it. Right. But like at the same time, it's just like the best worst marketing strategy ever because it works, and I hate the fact that it works. And people so are going well. and people are going to be buying it regardless. They exactly. want the new iPhone. They want the, they want to stay. They want the new the iPhone power. because like it looks so cute and rose gold and i'm just sitting here banging my head against the wall because right. i'm watching people burn money for no reason turning M- ryan's mic level down oh, <laughs> i could go on and on and on no but guys there, rest assured rest assured yeah apple is this is literally i don't see this as an environmental thing i see this as sure. like ryan said a marketing thing this yeah. is just Definitely. you know and, it, and the and the environmental way is like the best cover too Right. No, they yeah. call them out for it and they're like, no, really, we're being environmentally friendly, which is important now with climate change and with the wildfires. Fires. And everyone's like, oh, you're right. Yeah, we're based in California. Take so more of know. my money. I'll no, buy right two iPhones. <laughs> Bringing Ryan down. Uh, oh. But also, I wonder how much the cost of the headphones are going to be now and the power adapter. They did right. say they were going to reduce the price. Um, yeah, what, um, 5%? Dollars? <laughs> <laughs> They usually cost, I believe, maybe twenty nine, like thirty bucks, and now they're reducing it ten dollars, so approximately like nineteen dollars. Um, but nonetheless, I feel like it's exactly what you guys say. They, it's like Apple is like its own. It's like a monopoly, right? Because they know that they, although there is cell phone, I, I, I like to think of Apple as more of a cult, but a monopoly works. <laughs> Ryan thinks everything is a cult. That's my but personal Apple, this is not a good sign. I want to go on Twitter and I want to see what people are thinking about this and see Take their back honest your reaction. You know, it's mm. fall time. The new iPhone is coming up. You know, 
honestly, I, you know how they have those conventions and for Apple when introducing a new product? I would have wished someone would have stood up from the seats and been like, dude, what are you doing? You're already milking us. Stop milking us. We're not cows. We're not money cows, okay? Uh, yes, I argu- had to. Arguable. <laughs> We're not money cool. cows. But uh, yeah, so Crystal, thank you so much for bringing the story because as pretty much a lot of us are Apple users, probably at the station too. Uh, since this is no good news, not not whatsoever. Uh, and to think, st- to stay on a positive note and to release all of the frustration, we're gonna think let about. It out, let it out. I know we're gonna uh, we're gonna let it out. We're gonna let it out now. Take a second. Okay, nice. So now we're going to talk about holidays. Yay. So as usual, we promise that we're going to help you start a fresh and positive day. So here are a couple of things that you could be celebrating today. We've got International Day for Natural Disaster Reduction, National Emergency Nurses Day. So recognizing the dedication of ER nurses across the nation, and it takes place during Emergency Nurses Week. So it's actually a day in the entire week that is being celebrated. So shout out to all of our ER nurses that are working tirelessly right now, helping COVID-19 patients and ER cases right now. Thank you so much for all that you do and the dedication uh, that you give every day. We also got National Dessert Day. Why do I always mix it up with desert? Jeez. Uh, dessert, Dessert day. Okay, I said it. Uh, So actually, uh, in commemoration of this day, John Stamos uh, actually released a gluten-free layers of love brownie cakes uh, for this day, actually. And it's it's gluten-free, it's totally healthy and totally tasty. And this is in support of the Epidermolysis uh, Beloza Medical Research Foundation. So it's a sweet, it's a sweet thing for an awesome and a sweet cause. We also have National Bring Your Teddy Bear to Work and School Day. And our last one, National Stop Bullying Day. And for someone who actually was bullied for a good quarter of her life, uh, I think it's super important to be talking about this and making it a regular conversation in classrooms because when I went to school, it was not talked about as much, not taken as seriously as much, and uh, we cannot be promoting bullying in school. This is the time where your minds are young and developing, and it, you know, it's it's more about your self-character as well, making sure that every student is coming out of school and going into college uh, just confident and welcome and comfortable and happy. So yeah, let's, let's make some noise about that as well. And we actually have one more important event that Crystal can tell us a little bit more, a little bit more about. So tell us. Absolutely. So today is officially the last day of the month where we celebrate the contributions of Hispanic Americans have made to the United States. Yes, I am talking about Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, remember, though, you can continue to respect and love our culture all 365 days of the year. And most importantly, it's not only about showing up to our parties and holidays, <clears throat> cough, cough, Cinco de Mayo, but to stand in solidarity with us. Happy, happy Hispanic Heritage Month, everyone. And go eat yourself some tacos if you like. Uh, and flan. I love flan. I made flan for my, uh, I, I took Spanish for six years. Do not remember any single word except cal es número de teléfono. Uh, <laughs> clever <laughs> one. It. <laughs> a clever one but uh yeah go 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 make yourself a nice flan you know <laughs> they're really easy. today i will say that what they're really easy to make i know i made that for my project and i didn't win i was really sad about it but i went to my polish grandmother's kitchen and she helped me with the flan which is really interesting um but yeah so so awesome to hear that you know it's an end of an awesome and cultural uh month uh, we also have uh, our WMC scholarship right now. We're raising money for the WMC Excellence in Radio Scholarship and Training Fund that seeks to acknowledge and reward the hard work of undergraduate students who volunteer their time and efforts to the radio station and embody the hard work and spirit of excellence in college radio. Your donations will assist outstanding Montclair State University sophomores, juniors, and senior students who demonstrate considerable achievement and leadership at the radio station and give them potential to further uh, develop develop their uh, careers and, uh, you know, defraying their tuition costs and allowing them to attend vital industry 
training. So please help us out at the station and the college students here working tirelessly to uh, continue operating uh, during this time. So please donate to our scholarship fund by visiting crowdfund.montclair.edu slash project slash 22151, or you could just go to Crowdfund Montclair and find it on the homepage. <laughs> Don't forget to donate. <laughs> Don't forget to donate. And I also have one little announcement that I want to slide here uh, at the top of the hour on 90.3 WMSC up in Montclair, New Jersey. Perfect. <laughs> um, Nailed it. For the morning buzz, uh, if you've been listening this week, you know that we've been talking about an interview that we have coming up. If you are a fan of classic rock and roll and you have ever been to, I don't know, any classic rock concert that featured any artist that played in the 80s, you have probably seen legendary rock and roll photographer Mark Weiss lurking around. He just recently came out with his book, The Decade That Rocked. It is a photography book, and he currently has a show happening in New Jersey. So in the interview, uh, he talks about his book. He talks about the show that's going on and all of the awesome stuff that he's done in the world of photography. We will be airing that interview on Monday morning on the Morning Buzz. You can You're hearing tune it in. now. Exactly. You can tune in from uh, 8 to 9. We'll probably air the interview at around 8.30. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. And always, you can follow us on Twitter at WMSC Radio using the hashtag Morning Buzz. Love it, Ryan. Love the Morning Buzz plug. Always. Uh, and also, guys, uh, make sure to check out our recorded video episodes of today and all of our editions of the entire week on our YouTube channel, uh, 93WMSC. You can also check out our newsletter on our official website as well. And guys, we are so excited to have you stay on for the entire hour. Stay tuned for tomorrow's Friday edition of The Buzz with Leslie and George. And you can always listen to Tara Cicchetti's uh, Stomp and Stroll radio show at 2 p.m. today. All right, guys, have an awesome and positive day, and we'll see you guys next week.